Hello, this is Travis from Indie Boards and Cards. I'm here to talk to you about a great new hidden identity game called The Resistance. The Resistance plays 5 to 10 players in 30 minutes. And other, unlike other games like Werewolf, it requires no moderator and has no player elimination. In this video, we are going to cover how to play The Resistance. First, let's start with the game contents. At the heart of the game are the character cards. Included in the 11 character cards is the leader card, as well as 10 characters or roll cards. There's six resistance operatives. You'll note the blue background and the fist symbol that designate this card as a resistance member. There are also four spies. The spies cards have red backgrounds and an eye symbol. Included in the game are also five team cards and 20 vote cards, a set of prove and reject for each car, each player. There are 10 mission cards, a, se a set of succeed and fail cards for each person on the mission team. You'll note on the mission fail card shown here that there's the I symbol for the spies. The spies are the only players that can play a mission fail card. Also included are three scoring markers for the spies in red, three scoring markers for the resistance in blue, a mission marker for the targeting baron, and a tableau. On the tableau you'll find useful information used in the game. Now that we've seen what's in the box, let's learn how to use it. In the game the players are part of an underground clandestine organization called the resistance. They've been able to find out several key strategic points of weakness for the government and are planning to overthrow that government in a series of missions. Unfortunately, that government has infiltrated the resistance organization with a number of spies. It's the resistance job to make sure they complete several missions successfully while the spies will look to undermine the resistance. The key tenet of the game is no one can be trusted. You don't know who is the spy or who is the resistance. Unless, of course, you're a spy. Hello. Now we'll go on to the setup of the game. The first thing we'll do is place the tableau in the middle of the table with the score markers adjacent to the tableau. Then we'll give each player an approve and a reject vote card. They'll keep these cards throughout the remainder of the game. We'll randomly assign a leader. And then we'll look at the tableau to determine the number of resistance and spies. In this example, we're going to have five players, which as you can see is three resistance and two spies. We'll shuffle and give each player a character card. Each player secretly looks at their role as either a resistance operative or a spy. Now the leader ensures the spies know each other. This is done by having the leader walk through this following script. All players close your eyes, spies open your eyes, make sure you know who the other spies are, all players close your eyes, all players open your eyes. At this time the spies will know each other and the resistance will not know who the other resistance members are or who the spies are. Now that we're all set up and the spies know who each other are, we're ready to start the gameplay. Now we'll go on to describe how to play the game. The first part of the game is building the mission team. We'll refer to the tableau to determine the number of team members that will be on the mission. In this case, for five players, the first mission has two team members. We'll get two team cards and the leader will assign those team two team cards to any people that he wants to go on the mission. That can be himself. Now all the players will vote on the proposed team. In this case we see that the two players on the bottom approved the team but the three players on the top rejected the team. As a majority rejected or if it was a tie would also be a vote um, rejected vote for the team and leadership passes to the next player in a clockwise fashion. The new leader assigns the two team cards to whomever they choose and all the players vote again. Here the players in the bottom right have rejected the, the uh, proposed team but the three remaining players have approved the team. 
As it's the majority approved, the team is approved. And we move on to the second phase of gameplay, well, where we conduct the mission. Each of the two players in this case that were on the approved team gets a set of approve or, or succeed and fail mission cards. Those two team members secretly select a mission card to play. Note, the resistance must choose success. The two played mission cards are shuffled and revealed. One failure means the mission failed. In this case, one of the two team members on the mission put in a mission fail card and the mission fails. We use the score marker to indicate the mission fail one point for the spies. The leadership passes and we repeat team building and mission phases until either the spies or the resistance has three points. The team that gets three points first wins the game. Now we're going to go over the gameplay one more time just to make sure everyone has it. There's two phases, building the mission and conducting the mission. When we're building the mission, the leader assigns the correct number of team cards to players. Then all the players use their vote cards to approve or reject the proposed team. A mission team is approved if the majority have voted it approved. If a mission team is rejected, leadership passes clockwise, the new leader assigns the team cards, and all players vote again. When a team has been approved, it's time to conduct a mission. The players on the mission are given a pass-fail card, and then they secretly select one of those two cards. Note, the resistance must select pass. The spies can either pass or fail. We then shuffle the selected cards and reveal. Only one fail card is needed for a mission to fail. If a mission fails, it's one point for the spies. If a mission succeeds, it's one point for the resistance. After the mission, leadership passes clockwise and we build the next mission team. Two rules we should note here that we didn't talk about earlier. If there's five failed mission votes in a row um, before you go on a mission, the spies automatically win. This is the resistance not being able to organize themselves. Um, also, on the fourth mission in games with seven or more players, it actually takes two mission fail cards for the mission to fail and the spies to get a point. So that's it for gameplay. Pretty simple. So that's how you mechanically play the game, but it's not really how you play the game. Resistance a game, it's really based entirely on the people playing. The mechanics are just a framework for the social interaction that's supposed to take place in the game. This is a game that should be played with a lot of yelling, um, a lot of interaction between the players, accusations, counter accusations. It, it should be a noisy game. It's not solvable using logic. This isn't a multiplayer version of Mastermind. You'll note the spies already know who's who. So the spies are trying not to be uncovered. It's the resistance that much, must search for the truth. You know, and a few things you should note. Not every mission team has to be approved. Um, if a spy is running the mission, it's oftentimes good to uh, reject his team. Um, you can reject um, a, a team just to find out who's voting yes and who's voting no. You, know, you should always question why the people voted the way they did. Um, you can use logic on who went on the missions and who has failed to determine who could and could not be spies. Sometimes that logic will be able to reveal a spy. Um, and you need to make accusations when appropriate. Um, it, it's good to make accusations, but if you make them too early, you, you make yourself untrustworthy, and a good resistance operator needs to be trusted. You need to tell the other resistance people that you're part of the resistance. And of course, the spies are always going to claim that they're part of the resistance, and they need to deceive. They need to throw out bad logic without getting caught. Um, after you play the game a couple times, you'll probably want to try the expansion that's included, the plot thickens. Um, for seven or more players, this really adds some additional information for the resistance, but in the hands of the spies, they become quite easy to use the plot cards to deceive the resistance members. So I hope you enjoy the game, and I hope this was a good overview of how to play it.